Hey guys, it's Nick and I'm here at the Acropolis in Greece standing in front of the Parthenon and in this video I want to talk about money, precious metals and compound interest as it relates to the area back here when they were actually building the Acropolis about 2500 years ago. So I want to talk about what kind of money they used back then, what was the average salary of the people that were building this and what could they buy with that daily salary. Also, I want to talk about what would happen if they would have kept the precious metals that was in the money they had at the time or if they put it in a bank account gaining interest of even just 1% or up to 5% a year. How much would that be today if they kept it in there for 2,500 years? So my cousin is a tour guide here and in Olympia where they had the first Olympics. So he knows everything about ancient Greece and he told me a little bit about the money and the times of when they were building this. And so if you don't know, the drachma was the currency back then and it was even up until 2000 before they went into the euro. And back then, one drachma was about a day's wage here. And it's not, <laughs> the day's wage wasn't like these people that they hired to tell you don't sit on the ledge and don't pick up rocks and don't go over the line here or whatever. That day's wage was from sun up to sun down and it involved <laughs> taking large stones from the quarries, which you could probably see over here and so they would chop up these rocks and strip mine these mountains over here and drag them i don't know how they drag them but they dragged them all the way up here and placed them and made these columns and the roof and all of that kind of thing so it was no easy task so for all of that work for one day they got one drachma which would buy six loaves of bread or five drachmas would buy one gallon of olive oil or eight drachmas would buy one lamb or a pair of shoes and if you wanted a house that would cost you 1,000 drachmas. Now that 1,000 drachma number for a house is interesting because that's about three times the yearly salary if you take a 365 day work year. And that's kind of similar of what you have in the US now. If you make 50 grand a year, a bank will lend you about 150 grand to buy a house or three times your yearly salary is what they say is affordable to you. So what was actually in the drachma, a one drachma coin? It was about 4.3 grams of silver, which is about one seventh of an ounce of silver. And at today's prices of silver around $20, that would make it around $3 for one day's wage. Now, at the time they were building the Parthenon, all the coins were made out of silver. So one drachma had half the silver as two drachmas or one tenth of 10 drachmas. So it was all equally weighted by the silver content, not by a date or condition or anything like that like we have today, just the silver content. And why were the coins made of silver? Because there is a silver mine about 30 miles south of here called Lorion, and that's where they mine the silver to make the coins. They didn't have a gold mine at the time they did later, and that's when they made gold coins later on after they found these gold mines. So if you were busting your butt and working here carrying these rocks and made $3 in a day and you wanted to save it for the next 2,500 years and you were thinking of just keeping the coin itself with the silver value in it or converting that into whatever the equivalent of cash is and put it in a bank if there was a bank at the time which there was not and just get regular interest and i'm talking about one percent up to five percent interest but over 2500 years what would those numbers look like today and would it be likely that you would actually have some of that money or do other forces in the world, meaning governments, monies, wars, erode that money before you can uh, own everything in the world from this interest that you would receive over 2,500 years. 
So if my great, 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 great grandfather who worked here 25 years ago wanted to put away some money for me today, what would be the better investment? The $3 coin with $3 of silver in it or taking that money and putting it in an interest bearing bank account for 25 years. Let's see what that would look like for $3 or even just one penny over 2,500 years. Now it's been said that Einstein said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't understand it pays it. Let's see if Einstein's theory is correct. So the bad news for silver bugs is if you just took that coin from 2,500 years ago and put it under your mattress and woke up 2,500 years later, it's only worth about three dollars. Except uh, here's where the coin collectors come in and they say, well that that 2,500 year old coin would be worth a lot of money more than the silver value in it and I gotta agree with them there I'm not sure what a coin from back then would go for today but it's probably in a few thousand dollars tops probably maybe even less than that because they were very common so holding your precious metals would preserve your buying power from that day but it may not do much for you in terms of how it compares if you got interest or invested it in real estate or some business or some something that produces money all the time like interest now of course there were no banks back then and there was no interest and bank accounts i, I believe bank accounts started around the 1600s or something when goldsmiths would hold your gold and give you a ticket for your particular gold until the point where they realize that they can start giving out more tickets than the gold that they actually hold. So before, your ticket was for your specific piece of gold and it wasn't exchangeable to somebody else like a dollar is today where you can have a dollar and you can give it to somebody else and they can give it to somebody else when the banks figured that out then they started issuing more paper receipts than they had gold and that's how banks really started but let's suspend this belief for a minute and look at some actual numbers so if you took that three dollars worth of silver and put it in a bank account earning one percent interest for the next 2500 years how much would you have you would have about 190 billion dollars now that's a pretty good return for one percent but what happens if you got two percent on your money <laughs> then you would actually have 9500 billion billion dollars that means 9500 and 18 zeros next to it from three dollars at two percent over 2500 years which means you would own more than all the assets in the world somehow and i don't think there are any banks that would actually pay you that interest how about if you only had a penny to invest back then and put in a bank account let's see what would happen for one penny at one percent let's see what you would get with one penny at one percent two percent and five percent interest over 2500 years so at one percent interest you would get a paltry 635 million dollars at two percent interest you would get 31 billion billion dollars that's 31 with 18 zeros and if you put away one penny at 5% interest for 2,500 years, you would have 940 and 48 zeros after that. I don't even know what that number is, but obviously that is more than the value of all the gold, all the real estate, all the businesses in the world many times over. So what can we learn from this? Well, a few things. One, precious metals are good to keep their value especially in times of transition when there is hyperinflation and that is not uncommon even world reserve currencies like the British pound and other currencies in the past only lasted about a hundred years and the US itself is only on about 80 years and we are fastly approaching possibly hyperinflation as well I don't know if you know this but 
the Bretton Woods Agreement after World War II got all the major powers together and said, okay, the U.S. is going to be the world reserve currency and anybody that has U.S. dollars can transfer them into gold at $35 an ounce. And the U.S. said, yep, anybody could do it, any country, whatever. And so they were doing that for a while. The U.S. kept printing more money and they had the war in Vietnam. They needed more money and countries like France and other countries like Germany were taking their dollars that they were getting for selling goods to the U.S. and going to the U.S. and say, okay, I'd like my $35 an ounce gold, please. And they kept going for more and more and it wasn't sustainable. And so the U.S. said, remember that agreement at Bretton Woods where we're going <laughs> to convert dollars into gold at $35 an ounce? Uh, we changed our mind. So from now on, we're just not going to convert dollars into gold. How about that? <laughs> and everybody just said, uh, what am I going to do? You know, they're, they're the big guys in the room or whatever, and they can do it for now. That may change in the future, but that's what happened. So for all you gold bugs and silver stackers out there, including myself, this is not very good news. Normally, the precious metals would hold their value and purchasing power. However, in an inflationary world where they purposely make inflation by creating money all the time, so that they can make loans and get interest on those loans out of thin air. The funny money, inflationary money is going to outperform the gold and silver most of the time, except when that money or that currency dies and then there's a transition to another currency. That's probably the only time when gold and silver does really well. Now the funny thing is, even though precious metals don't give you these high interest rates and these trillions and trillions of theoretical dollars from compound interest, the silver actually beats putting the money in a bank account because, as you know, businesses fail, banks fail, countries fail, currencies fail, wars happen, invasions happen. Greece was invaded by Venetians, Romans, Turks. I'm pretty sure if there was a bank back then and these invading countries came in, <laughs> they're just going to be like, okay, thanks for the money in the bank. Uh, your money is now zero. So at least if you were holding these precious metals under your bed, you would still have them today. As for a bank account and Einstein's quote about compound interest, it's great, but over short periods of time, kind of like how Newton's laws of motion only works for speeds that are not comparable to the speed of light. Then they break down. Same thing with this quote about compound interest. So yes, as long as your currency is functioning, your government is functioning, you're not being invaded, then you will make more money from interest, investments, real estate, that kind of thing. But for the really long term and through transitions, precious metals probably will do better. And lastly, you won't be around long enough to collect these astronomical sums of compound interest. So don't try to focus every second of your life on trying to make money because you cannot replace time. You can replace money. So I guess I would say just stick to conservative diversified investments, the usual index funds, high paying dividend stocks, real estate, some precious metals, and go on with your life and enjoy it while you can. Just imagine if you were one of these guys 2,500 years ago, pulling these rocks up the hill for 10, 12 hours a day, only so you can take that money and invest it in some interest bearing bank account for your relatives down the line. And 2,500 years later, <laughs> your relatives get the money and they blow it all in one year on gambling, tattoos, iPhones, uh, avocado toast, video games, etc, etc. I hope you like this one guys. I gotta go now and enjoy the rest of my vacation. Thanks for watching.